Uh, thank you, Pato and uh, Macken, and uh, thank you, Becky, for inviting us to present and speak this morning. Uh, pardon my voice, I'm still sort of in recovery mode, so I'm sort of in my Darth Vader phase, so if you don't mind listening to Darth this morning, I, you know, uh, Darth, Darth sometimes has good things to say. Years ago, one of my, uh, one of my uh, big adventures was uh, backpacking, hitchhiking through Africa, from South Africa up to Kenya. And it took about five, six months to do this, and I final destination was to be in Kenya, where I was sort of a uh, assistant to a, a minister who had 15 churches uh, on the slopes of Mount Kenya. But I started in South Africa, and one of the inter interesting places uh, I went was across Botswana. And as I was going across uh, Africa, there's a question I sort of wanted to ask. I wanted to say, you know, what's, what's the African sort of pre-colonial view of God? How do they think about God and, and people even before the colonials got here, the church got here? And it was on that trip through the Kalahari Desert where I was hitchhiking that I got a few answers, which I thought were very interesting. I got picked up after waiting for a couple of days because uh, traffic doesn't go every, every day through the Kalahari Desert on this dirt road, just one road through. But I got picked up by this uh, retired Lutheran uh, missionary, and I rode in the back of the truck with a couple of Hottentot uh, people who were sort of making clicking noises that they had talked. And as we drove along the, the dirt road through the Kalahari Desert, there were ostriches and, and antelope and zebra that were sort of uh, uh, running beside us and around us, and it was fascinating. And several times we'd stop as we crossed these many days of going across the desert. And the missionary had some communities, some Bushman communities that she was in touch with. They had not converted, they weren't Christian, but she was in touch with them and building relationships. And I got to know a little bit of the ways of the Bushmen there. And finally, sort of after crossing, I had a conversation uh, at the end point of the desert with a Catholic priest. And I said, you know, I'd be interested to know after hearing and seeing these people sort of, you know, what is, what is their kind of view of God, you know, even before they, they heard from the colonials that were here. And he says, well, they don't have kind of an organized religion, but they do believe in a creator. And they think that if you respect the creator, then you won't destroy creation. I said, well, that's, that's, that's interesting. That seems to be far ahead of where lots of folk are. I said, how about people? How do they see people? They said, well, they believe that human beings are created in God's image. And I said, like, like in Genesis. He said, yes, like in Genesis. And this is what it says in Genesis, in this small passage. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them. I thought back to some of my encounters in the States and in Scotland where I just come from about some of the way that the church was trying to bring the good news to people. And I recall, and maybe you've sort of seen these before, sort of it's called the plan of salvation or the four spiritual laws. And I think if I'm correct, it always started with admit that you're a sinner. Number one, admit that you're a sinner. And I, I said, what, is, is that the first take on humanity, sin? I said, that's not exactly where the Bushmen start. And if you think about it, it's not where Genesis starts. It's not actually very biblical at all to start with, admit that you are a sinner. So, I must I had some prejudice toward that method, realizing that so much of conversion and evangelism was kind of based on guilt and shame and negativity and sin. And I thought, you know, that's, that's not very good news. It seems like the good news, the more attractive news, is that you are made in God's image. That, that's a much better starting place. Not only does it say you are made in God's image, but then it goes on to say, it was good, God says. It was very good. So God created humankind in God's image, in the image of God, created them. And then, it, again, it says... God bless them. So the starting point, the, the original point is blessing, or as Matthew Fox says, original blessing. 
yes, it's true that sin does enter in. It doesn't come into really chapter 3. And there's a problem with sin. There's a problem with the evil in the world. But original blessing is before original sin. The first reality of our lives, of your life, of me, of us, is that we are made in God's image, that there is goodness, there is blessing. You know, Israel had this, this law against making graven images or fixed images of God. It's called idolatry. The only image of God that was allowed to be uh, expressed was humanness, the image of God found in us. The idea of people as images of God may go back to this time when it was the practice of kings who would erect statues of themselves in the areas where they could not physically be present. And the statue or the image was to proclaim the authority of the king. And so it goes that human beings are the image of God for the sake of God's authority and responsibility in the world. And that's why we are called to be images of God. At the core, at the base, our identity is the image of God, goodness, blessing. And that is indeed good news, the place to start. It really does make a difference in our church, in our lives, in our theology, if that's the starting place that we are made in God's image. We need to remember that truth. I like what Rabbi Joshua ben Levi said. He said, there's a procession of angels that goes before every person. And the heralds go before them proclaiming, make way for the image of God. Make way for the image of God. Yesterday morning, uh, MSN, our campus minister, was out in the parking lot here at Washington Street serving probably over 100 people who were hungry, who were homeless, who were food insecure. And, you know, I swear, as they came to get in line to get breakfast after they'd been rough, living rough, many of them overnight, they were, they were dragging these suitcases on broken wheels. They had, they had backpacks on. They had not shaved. You could tell they needed a bath, some of them. But I tell you that as they were approaching the table, I saw that there was a band of angels before them. And there was a herald even before those angels. The herald was proclaiming, make way for the image of God. Make way for the image of God. At Catholic Charities where we saw as those human beings got off the bus, the ice bus, coming through Catholic Charities to be processed, to be helped to get to the next stage of their life, I know I saw before every person that was coming to the building, getting off the bus, a procession of angels. And before those angels, a herald proclaiming, make way for the image of God, make way for the image of God. I had coffee sort of unexpectedly last year with uh, an alum at MSN of USC. And uh, I saw him inside Starbucks. We met, we talked, and then he started to reveal his story to me. His, his ties had been severed with his parents. He was, he was moving state, leaving South Carolina. Had so much heartache, so much, so much upset, even anger in him. He had come out and he told his parents he was transitioning from female, from, sorry, from male to female. And we talked and we prayed and said goodbye, embracing. And I saw her walk across the parking lot there of Starbucks to get in her car. And I know I saw as well a company of angels preceding her. And there was a herald before her proclaiming the good news, make way for the image of God, make way for the image of God. Did you know that probably somewhere in South Carolina this morning there is a white nationalist that went to church saying that he believes in Jesus, saying that he's following the way of Christ. And even as that white nationalist leaves church, there's a procession of angels before him. And that procession of angels has a herald in front proclaiming, make way for the image of God. Make way for the image of God. Everywhere you've been this week, everywhere you'll go tomorrow, there's a procession of angels before you and a herald proclaiming, make way for the image of God. I have liked to collect icons in the past. I have a few. 
you know, some Christians think they're kind of uh, idolatrous, I guess, but, but I like them. And um, icons, you know, they're, they're pictures, they're, they're images of, of God's presence, of God's activity. Uh, this is one that's featured at Teze, Jesus and the Believer, another one of Jesus on the cross. But when we see icons, we're supposed to get the idea of God's or some attribute of God. We're supposed to be maybe inspired or comforted by the picture. But you know, if we are images, then, then we are icons of God as well. When, when people look at us, they're supposed to get some sort of sense of who God is, the goodness of God, some sense of the love of God and acceptance of God as they look at us. And at the same time, what our job is as Christians is we are, we are to reveal to them the image of God in them. And that's really what evangelism is. It's me going to you, you going to another, and by encounter, our encounter, you have left feeling that the image of God has somehow been dusted off and revealed and uncovered in you, which gives you the capacity, the ability to live your own image of God in life. But you know, it's true. Over the years, the image gets buried by brokenness, by hardship, uh, by the media perhaps, the culture around us, by heartache, by rejection. Somehow that image in us gets dimmed, gets buried, gets very dusty. And so we have to continue to look deep inside and look deep inside of each other and do the things that can dust off the image and uncover the image in ourselves and in others. What if we really saw our own image of God in us? What if we really noticed and respected the image of God in those who are around us? How much change could there be? What a difference could that make in the world if we only, only could see that image? It's like we've like we've forgotten that's even in us. I like what Mother Teresa says. She says, you know, one of the main problems of human beings is that we've forgotten that we belong to each other. One of the big ills of the humankind is that we've forgotten that we belong to one another. And therefore we've forgotten that the image of God is deep within us. Listen to what Paul says in Romans when he's describing a community of faith where the image of God is recognized, where the image of God is revealed in one another, when people belong to one another. Just a few verses. Go and read it and meditate on it later on if you want to. He says, Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. Know if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by, burning, for by doing this, you will be heaping burning coals on their heads. What an amazing description of a community that knows that they're made in the image of God and is busy trying to reveal that image in one another and the world around them. We saw there in the Rio Grande, we saw these buoys that have been placed there with the permission of the governor of Texas. These buoys are meant to stop people swimming from Mexico across the Rio Grande into the United States. These buoys have spikes on them. We've even discovered that they have kind of saws on them as well. And there's been reports that as people have swum the Rio Grande, many have been killed by these buoys. 
And I'm just wondering, has the governor of Texas developed a case of amnesia? Has, has he forgotten that we really belong to each other? I see that there are pictures, I've seen pictures of Putin on the internet. You know, he was baptized at an early age. His mother insisted that he get baptized. You sometimes can see pictures, I've seen pictures of him wearing his baptismal cross. And I think, you know, here's this person who thinks he's the guardian of Christendom in Russia, attackingly, attacking what has been a traditional Christian country and even sisters, brothers of Ukraine. And I'm wondering, how can this happen? That Christian, so-called Christian fights, Christians, could it be that maybe the nicest thing you could say about him is that he really has a severe case of amnesia, that he's forgotten that we belong to one another. We all belong to one another. We're all made in God's image. There's no Democrat or Republican image of God. There's no black, white, Asian, Latino image of God. There's no bi, there's no straight, there's no lesbian, there's no trans image of God. There's no, there's no Chinese, American, Ecuadorian, Russian image of God, at least according to Genesis. It's just the image of God that we're made in. Have we forgotten that we belong to one another? Have we forgotten that we're all made in the image of God? Just remember, folk, and let me give you a warning. As you leave here today after the service, it's going to be noisy. It's going to be crowded because as each one of you leaves this place, there'll be a company of angels preceding you. And before that company, a herald shouting, make way for the image of God. Make way for the image of God. Let's be careful and just live out that image. Amen.